The Jack Benny program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. You know, friends, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is... Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike. This is Don Wilson. Friends, there's no question you smoke for enjoyment. The enjoyment you get from the taste of a cigarette. Sure, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. Yes, Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. And there are two very good reasons why. First, as everyone in America knows, L.S., M.F.T., Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Light, naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco. Second, Lucky's are made better. They're round, firm, fully packed, so they'll draw freely and smoke evenly. Fine tobacco in a better-made cigarette just naturally adds up to better taste. Remember, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. So, be happy. Go Lucky. Ask for a carton of Lucky Strike and find out for yourself that Lucky's really do taste better. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, the Sportsman Court, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today is September 20th, and since tomorrow is the first day of fall, I just barely have time to bring you the last rose of summer, Jack Benny! <laughs> Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, if I may be so bold as to criticize your facetious introduction, I should like to point out that there's nothing funny about calling a 38-year-old man the last rose of summer. And now, ladies oh, and gentlemen... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jack, hold it, hold it. Now, let's get this straight. Did you say you were 38? Yes. But and last now, year, last year you insisted you were 39. That's right. Well, then how can you be 39? Some fool hadn't frightened him, I'd have been 37. <laughs> now, let's get on with the program, because we have a very important sketch to do. Did you rehearse your part, Mary? Mary, I'm talking to you. Huh? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Jack. I was just reading this special delivery letter I got from Mama. Oh, another letter from your mother, huh? Uh-huh. Well, what does the white witch doctor of Plainfield <laughs> have to say? <laughs> oh, wait. Wait, and I'll read it to you. Okay. <clears throat> My darling daughter, Mary, mm -hmm. I haven't written in a long time, and this letter will contain both good news and bad news. Mm. Last week, we heard Jack's first radio program of the season. Now for the good news. <laughs> <laughs> Papa finally bought us a television set. Well, they've got a television set. <laughs> Sunday night, we sat and watched Jack's television show. I liked it, but Papa seemed quite bored until Marilyn Monroe appeared. The repairman charged us $11 to get Papa's head out of the screen. God. Now for some news about your sister, Babe. Oh, boy, this is the part I like. Uh, babe went to Atlantic City for the bathing beauty contest. No kidding. She entered again this year as Miss Coal Miner. No. I guess they always pick her because she looks so much like John L. Lewis. Poor babe. She has to pay a hairdresser ten bucks for her eyebrows alone, you know. No other news, so we're close now. Your loving mother, Jaja. You know, Mary. You know, Mary. Sometimes. Sometimes. I... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, the song I'm going to sing today Wait is. A minute. Wait a minute, Dennis. You just came in. Why are you in such a hurry to sing your song? I've got to rush over to the hospital to have my appendix taken out. Gosh, that... Wait, Dennis. Didn't you have your appendix taken out last year? Uh-huh. Well, why do you want them to operate again? I joined the Blue Cross and I want to get my money's worth. <laughs> oh, 
Look, look, kid, if you've had your appendix taken out once, you can't have it taken out again. Are you sure? Well, of course I'm sure. Well, can't they open me up and rummage around a little? <laughs> oh, stop, and don't argue with me anymore. After all, I know more about appendectomies than you do. At rehearsal, you couldn't even pronounce it. <laughs> Look, chiss sweeze, be quiet, will you? Now, let's talk to Sarge. Oh, what is it, Guy Chiss? <laughs> Mr. Benny's line is flashing. Yeah, I wonder what gentlemen prefer money wants now. <laughs> I'll plug in and find out. Yes, Mr. Benny. Yes, sir, I'll climb right away. Oh, gosh, Mabel. Ain't it awful getting back to work after a vacation? Yeah. Say, Gertrude, uh, where did you go this summer? Yeah, no place particular. <laughs> Once, though, I went deep sea fishing. It was awful. I was never so insulted in all my life. Well, why? What happened? When we got back to the dock, some smart aleck hung me up by my feet and had his picture taken. <laughs> Imagine that guy making out I was a fish. <laughs> Gee, you must have been out on that boat a long time. You sure got sunburned. Why, am I still peeling? Yeah. Let's hope what's underneath looks better. <laughs> Sing my song now. Dennis, can't you sing a little later? No. Why not? I've already taken the anesthetic. I may be asleep by then. <laughs> now, cut that out. Just sing your song and stop with that silly talk about anesthetics and your appendix. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, hold it a second. Hold it. Just a minute, Dennis. Mary, I meant to tell you I saw the latest copy of the Woman's Home Companion, and there's a swell picture of you on the cover. Well, thanks, Don. The song I'm going to sing is... Wait a minute, Dennis. Don, for your information, my picture's on that cover, too. Oh, I know it is, Jack, and I want to ask you something. Why in the world would they use your picture on a woman's magazine? Have you ever seen him walk? <laughs> yeah. Shall I sing now? Yeah, sing, sing. That was beautiful. You know, every season I think that your voice is so perfect it can't improve. And then the opening of the next season, you surprise me by being better than ever. You really have a wonderful voice, Dennis. You should be proud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Somebody take them out of here and wake them up. Well, I will, Jack. Thanks. Be sure to come back, because boy, you both have parts in our sketch tonight. Uh, Jack, what's the sketch about? Well, Mary, tonight we're going to do our version of that new Technicolor saga of the South Seas, Return to Paradise, which starred Gary Cooper. And I guess you'll play the lead. Yep. <laughs> 
Anyway, I felt that since I had been to the South Pacific, it would give me a good reason to do the picture. He's see? right, Marion. It'll be a natural for me, too. Oh, hello, Bob. Hi, Jack. <laughs> you know, Mary, uh, I was in Hawaii this summer the same time that Jack was. I know, Bob. In fact, the other day I met your wife and she showed me pictures of you riding a surfboard. Yeah, I really went in for that surfboard in a big way. Gosh, it looks awfully hard. Well, it is, but I practiced balancing myself, and before I left, I was able to go out into the ocean, get on the board, and come all the way into shore standing up. Well, that's more than your musicians can do right here in the studio. <laughs> Believe me. Huh? Now, you look, Jack, I told you last week, the boys don't like you always picking on them. Oh, these boys don't. No, and I'm warning you. If you say anything tonight about Remley, he's going to sock you. <laughs> That's what his psychiatrist told him to do. <laughs> Wait a minute. R Remley is going to a psychiatrist? Why, he goes every day and he's psychoanalyzed for hours. Just the three of them locked in a room. The three of them? Yeah, the psychiatrist, Frankie, and that little green man on his shoulder. <laughs> oh, you mean Clyde. <laughs> well, he's cute. Yeah. Anyway, the psychiatrist explained that there really isn't any little man there. Remley just thinks so because he drinks so much. Well, do you think the psychiatrist will cure him from drinking? Well, he didn't get to Frankie. He's still working on Clyde. <laughs> Gee, I didn't know Clyde drank. <laughs> anyway, Bob... That's what's wrong with your boys. That's all they think about. They never pay any attention to their music. Oh, not all of them, Jack. You take Bagby, the piano player, Francis. Now, he's not like that a bit. He's very serious about his music, and he studies all he can. Oh, he does, huh? Well, let me show you something. Hey, Bagby. Yeah? Come here a minute, will you? He studies music. He knows all about music, everything, yeah? Charlie, I'd like to ask you a few questions about music. Now, how many pedals are there on your piano? Three. Mm-hmm, right. What are these three pedals for? Water, soda, and ginger ale. <laughs> Water, soda, and ginger ale? The electric guitar makes ice cubes. <laughs> you can sit down again, Maggie. What a bunch of guys. If they didn't have this program, they'd all starve to death. <laughs> Don't you be so sure. Why, a couple of weeks ago, Remley made an appearance on the Ralph Edwards show, This Is Your Life. And they dramatized Remley's life? No, Clyde's. <laughs> Bob. Bob. Look, I'd love to continue this intellectual discussion. But we got to get on with the show. Don, set the scene for the sketch. Uh, Don is out in the hall with Dennis. Oh, for heaven. Is Dennis still asleep? Uh-huh. What's he sleeping on? Don. <laughs> Well, look, and I'll set the scene myself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we will present our version of that current United Artists release, Return to Paradise. And in this sketch, I will play the part of... Hmm. Hello? Hello, Mr. Barry, this is Rochester. Rochester, I tried to call you back. What did you want? The insurance adjuster was over to see you about that accident in the Maxwell. Oh, yes, yes, that accident to my car. Did he ask you any questions? Yes, sir. First he asked if you were a reckless driver, and I said no. Good. Then he asked if you were on the right side of the street when the accident happened, and I said yes. Uh-huh. Then he asked me if you were exceeding the speed limit. What did you say? Nothing. We both laughed and went on to the next question. <laughs> What was the next question? Uh, what was... <laughs> what was the next question the insurance man asked you? He wanted to know how come you turned left after you signaled for a right turn. Did you explain that to him? Uh-huh. I told him when you ain't got a steering wheel, you've got to depend on the wind. <laughs> well, certainly. Did you describe the accident to the adjuster? Yes, sir. I told him that as soon as you started to turn the wrong way, you jammed on your brakes and stopped. And that's when the man hit your car and turned it over. And it was all his fault. That's right. He had no business jaywalking. <laughs> <laughs> I 
You said it. Is the adjuster still there? Oh, no, sir, Mr. Benny. He left. Well, I got to get on with the program. Goodbye, Rochester. Goodbye! All right, Don, set the scene for our skit. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we present our version of the Technicolor Saga of the South Seas, Return to Paradise. Our story starts 25 years ago on the island of Monterey, a tiny spot of land seemingly lost in the vast expanse of the Pacific, peaceful in appearance, lush with tropical undergrowth. My name is Gary Benny. <laughs> I just landed on the island of Matarefa after 14 continuous days of rowing. I was hungry, but that didn't worry me because I knew these tropical islands abounded in papayas. I never could figure out why there were so many papayas because I never saw any mamayas. <laughs> I was walking along the beach. A native came up to me and said, Aloha. Aloha. Me chief of island. Oh, for a minute, me thought you was island. <laughs> the chief said he would talk to his tribe to see if I could stay. He took me away and put me in a little grass shack. For three days, I did nothing but sit in my little grass shack and watch the Huma Huma Nuka Nuka Apuwaha go swimming by. <laughs> then they told me I could stay, and in my honor, they would have a feast that night. I was just getting ready to leave my shack when she walked. <laughs> she was wearing some kind of native garment that fitted her like a glove. I looked again. It was a glove. <laughs> And she smiled at me and said, Me chief's daughter. Me come to take you to Luau. Good. But tell me, just what is a Luau? It is native feast with bananas, berries, pineapple, coconuts, roast pig, steamed fish, and simmering rolls. <laughs> God. Then, when everybody is full, we bow and give thanks to Great White Father. Who is Great White Father? Eisenhower. We still on lend lease. <laughs> As we walked to the luau, she told me her name was Maeva. Maeva was beautiful. Not as beautiful as Sinatra's Ava. <laughs> After the feast, they passed around a bowl of their native drink from which all the warriors drank. The man sitting next to me handed to me, saying, Here, you drink. What's in it? Okula, Maluna, Opanui Nui. What does that mean in English? Manasheva of a bit swine. The luau progressed, and soon the music started. <laughs> playing the piano <laughs> using the third pedal. <laughs> then four warriors came out and sang one of their war chants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Tasting like he's sparking our car. Lucky Strike is made of mighty, 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 mighty fine tobacco. Sella, 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 Time went on, I fell in love with my Ava. One day I went up to her and said, My Ava, will you marry me? Me no can marry you, you commoner, me princess. My Ava had been acting this way ever since her picture was on the cover of Woman's Home Companion. <laughs> but I did not give up. I continued courting her. One day we were at a picnic with the natives. The islanders were all in a happy mood. As they talk to each other. Makahila mula huma malahini upa ala hai kokomoko. Nui nui ma ukalala pua muli poi poi poo. doubt about it. That new Hawaiian writer I hired is terrific. <laughs> Ava was in a happy mood, too, and once again I proposed to her. This time she told me the real reason why she wouldn't marry me. It was on account of the ruler of the island, a cruel dictator they called the Master. I decided to let the Master know I was coming to see him by using the jungle telephone system, the native drums. <laughs> what is it, Mahila? <laughs> Mr. Benny's drum is beating. Yeah, I wonder what the goon of Manakura wants now. <laughs> I'll answer him and find out. She let the master know I was coming and I went to his house. He was a cruel ruler. He never let the natives have any fun. He wouldn't allow the native boys to go with the native girls. I also found out that it was he who wouldn't let the papayas have any mamaya. <laughs> I entered his house, and when I came face to face with him, I said, Sir, I come to you not with anger in my heart, but with love. I would like to marry my Ava and live in this beautiful paradise, in some little grass shack nestled under the lush palm trees, Cooled by the balmy breezes. Ah, shut up! <laughs> but, sir, you no can marry my Eva. Wait a minute. Why are you so harsh? Why don't you allow the natives to enjoy themselves? If me no have fun, no one have fun. Why can't you have any fun? My appendix is killing me. <laughs> well, look, master, I love my Eva, and I want to marry her. Okay, me talk him over with my advisor. Malihini inui pau pelikia kini popo pake mane o Dorton. Nui nui pauri akanoa bara opa huka pau. Who's that? Clyde. <laughs> they held another consultation and sent me away from the island. They cast me adrift. As the current began to carry me away, I looked back at the distant shore, and there standing on the beach was my Ava. I was many miles away, but I could still see her because she was standing on her 200 copies of the Woman's Home Companion. <laughs> that is my story, but it is...
is not complete. For someday I shall return to paradise. <laughs> Jack will be back in just a minute. But first, a word to cigarette smokers. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For lucky strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky strike. Lucky strike. This is Don Wilson, friends. There's no doubt about it. Smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Now, freshness is particularly important. For if a cigarette isn't truly fresh, it can't possibly give you the enjoyment it should. That's why every pack of Lucky's is extra tightly sealed. To bring you Lucky's better taste in all its natural freshness. Yes, Lucky's do taste better because first, L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Then two, Lucky's taste better because they're made better. Made round and firm and fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly. So, friends, smoke the cigarette that has better taste when it's made and then brings you all that better taste in a fresh cigarette. Yes, be happy. Go lucky. Ask for a carton of Lucky Strike and find out for yourself that Luckies really do taste better. Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes my second radio program of the season. We'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time and every Sunday after that until June 6th. Oh, boy, here it is vacation again. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Jack Benny Show was written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, Hal Goldman, and Al Gordon, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. Be sure to hear The American Way with Horace Height for Lucky Strike every Thursday over this same station. Consult your newspaper for the time. The Jack Benny Program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. This is the CBS Radio Network. And KNX Los Angeles. Vintage Radio Shows.com